Hi, my name is Phil, I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the announcement, finally, that schools and colleges in England will be closing after it had already been announced that they would have been in Northern Ireland, which has already taken place, as well as Wales and Scotland. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, this was always going to be one of those topics uh, I would discuss as a teacher, even though uh, this is now my full-time profession very recently. I still keep my hand in. I do a little bit of very part-time teaching at a, at a college, and I was in today. And these things develop very quickly. I say I was in today. That's the point at which I'm recording this, actually, from the point of view you're watching. It's yesterday. And I we'd already on Monday uh, been discussing with the students what I would aim to do in the event of the college closing, because even by then it was inevitably going to happen. The government have been slow to react in a number of areas, and this was always one of them. And just to explain how, why it was so inevitable it would have to happen. And this is, has nothing to do with it um, being essential in order to, to implement the social distancing which we know works for beating the virus. This is just from a teacher's point of view. It was not feasible because you had staff who were having to self-isolate. Maybe they were having to self-isolate because they themselves had come down with symptoms. Maybe they were having to self-isolate because someone in their household had. And because we're not getting tested, we can't say that these teachers are clear of it, which means they can't go into work. And that means you've got fewer and fewer teachers in the school or college. You cannot manage the sheer number of students. For example, when I went in, half the department's off. And not all of it is, of course, going to be down to self-isolation. Some of it will just be down to illness, which is not necessarily an illness that could be coronavirus. It could just be another illness. Teachers become ill every now and then or, or suffer injuries. And... Um, so it was unsustainable. And I was I was talking and I was saying, you know, the fact that an announcement hadn't been made. Now, at the time I was talking about this, Northern Ireland was already closing its schools and um, Scotland had already announced that it would and Wales had already announced that it would be doing as well. It was only England left. Now, obviously, the government couldn't just be the last, the, the one that wasn't doing it when the rest of the UK was. It'd be fairly clear that it would be doing so. Uh, for reasons which I'll come on to. So it had to happen. And even if the government didn't announce it, then the individual schools and colleges would have done because once you go down below a certain number of staff who are able to go in and look after those kids, it, it's not safe. I mean, it was all right, the government talking about having larger class sizes. The rooms are only so big. We're not expanding the size of the rooms. And do you know what? They're already jammed in there, good and proper, in a lot of schools and colleges were already rammed in there, certainly schools. So that was not feasible either. The schools or colleges would have just had to make the decisions themselves. So now the decision has been taken out of their hands, apart from the ones who'd already made that decision, the government has said, no, we're going to be closing them uh, by the end of the week. And you can understand the government's reticence to do this, absolutely, because what has been created as a result of this, if you think it through, is all of a sudden there are a load of kids thrust upon their parents. And, and it is much more the norm these days that both parents will be out working in the daytime. So now you've created a massive childcare issue. Just to give you a little uh, example of, of this. Well, not an example, but just an example of the thinking of this. So my girlfriend's youngest daughter's school has announced that it will be closing from Friday. Uh, and they've said that, you know, the, they have what they call year 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. And the years 9 and 10 are not to go in again. That's it. You, you, you're gone. Uh, you're not going back in for a while anyway, until further notice, which I think is basically not at all this year, or this academic year. But year 7s and 8s, to the younger ones, year around about ages 11 to 13, and they, um, or 11 and 12 rather now, depends where the birthday is, 10 to 13, 10 to 12? I don't think any of them would be 13 yet, would they? Um, some may be, some may be. Anyway, they, 
then they are still going to go into school. Now, you can, you can understand that because you cannot overnight just suddenly tell parents their kid who you thought was going to be going to school for the next couple of days isn't going to be and they're too young to look after themselves. So the older ones, it's deemed, well, they could look after themselves. It is an emergency after all. And then the year 11s are also going to be finishing, but they've got exams. Now, I'm going to have to come on to exams as a separate topic, not only because it is a separate subject that I want to talk about lots and lots of permutations, but also because the government haven't actually announced what their plan for that is. And I sort of fear if I talk about how this is going to impact the very important GCSE and A-level exams, by the time you are watching it, the government may have made an announcement that completely invalidates everything I say. So unfortunately, although I am desperate to talk about that because there's so much to talk about, I'm going to have to wait. Um, but we, and, and this is the impact on the economy that the government really desperately wants to avoid it, but you have to put people's safety and health first. So you now have a situation where there's going to be kids not going to school. And uh, after this week, throughout the UK now, throughout the UK, and that has to be managed and that is going to be an absolutely epic child management system, which inevitably is going to impact parents. Parents who cannot work at home, for example, um, are potentially going to have serious childcare issues. Now, quite what the government's plan for this is, we don't yet know. The, the problem we've had at the moment is that the government has reacted, which is very bad. Proactivity is much better to reactivity. This is something that should have been realised we are going to have to do for a couple of months now. The, the, the chief medical officer was saying that this is going to have to happen, um, but ministers were very slow to get around it. So inevitably, once we've got to the point where they've been told, look, the government ministers, prime ministers, particularly Boris Johnson, you've got to do this now. You have got to do it. Um, and he's had to do it. There's a lot to think about. There is a lot to think about. It's not a simple decision. Oh, yeah, right, we need to close the schools. There's, there's a lot of domino effect after it. And they haven't thought that through because they wouldn't accept the fact that they were going to have to do it. Or if they did, they wouldn't accept they had to do it for now. I could sort of imagine them thinking, let's make, make it till Easter, which would have been another two and a half weeks away. I suppose it might, no, two and a half weeks away till the Easter break. And then see how it goes um but you know and, and i brought this up that the government were probably thinking that and the head of department just said no they can't they can't we you know we can't go on for this long and when i knew that we couldn't because like i say we can't actually staff the classes which is disadvantaging some students and that has a knock-on effect if you didn't close the schools and exams went ahead as normal which absolutely couldn't happen but if they had what about the students who weren't getting their proper classes because of staff, because of teachers self-isolating? They're at a disadvantage. You have to then try and work out how to arrange those assessments so they're not a disadvantage, which is the problem they now have with the exams. But that is a separate issue. But that's the situation now. We've now cottoned on to the fact that we need to close them. What the government haven't is yet, at the point at which I'm saying this, what they haven't as yet done and I suppose by the time you're watching this, probably not either, is what they do about all the things that stopped them wanting to close it in the first place. What do they do about the childcare issues? What do they do about par working parents who need to deal with those childcare issues? What do they do about the, the term and a bit of education that is going to be lost to this year? What do they do about the exams and assessments for the following year? But that is something I will have to pick up on once the government actually say what it is, if they haven't said by the end of Thursday, then I'm going to have to say something anyway, uh, because there are more implications to it than I think many people are realising. And also more things that the government could choose to do. There isn't an obvious solution. There are multiple solutions, all of which have their drawbacks, but one of which will have to be selected. So anyway, that's my take on it uh, from actually having some inside industry experience for once rather than having to follow the right experts. I uh, hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.